Hey, good afternoon folks. Uh, this is Susan and I want to talk about um, <clears throat> some of these um, mathematicians and, and scientists and um, physicists. You know, by all means, let us open the books. And I've been saying it for a while now um, that we need to open up the books and share our notes because everybody has notes. Um, whether you believe in God or not, because God is a God of freedom, not oppression. God gives people the right to believe in God or not. So, because God has given you your God-given gift to humanity, um, you know, by all means, let us. Because I don't think it does anybody any good to <clears throat> to um, be hiding um, your gift from the public only to share with your colleagues and have this competition among you. I know there has been comp competition among you for a long time, you know, about, you know, who gets to the moon first and you know, who does this first, who builds the atomic bomb, and who does this kind of thing first. And that is unhealthy competition. Healthy competition is where we're all in it together, and we're like, okay, let's see how we can use all of our gifts to build it together. For example, here in the house, this is not my house, but in my house, where I am in charge of my house, I like to keep the house clean, and I clean as I go along. But if there's any any time that you know things kind of pile up and need to be straightened, then you know it's like everybody does it together, and it gets done quicker. So, we know that. Now, I'm reading, I'm reading about um, this mathematician who passed away, Paul Erdos. And I may not be pronouncing his name properly, but Hungarian gentleman. You know, very intelligent, very intelligent, had God-given gifts to humanity. And... Um, but this is what he had to say, and I, I just find it very interesting, you know, because we've got to talk about these things. Because we're all human, we're all here on planet Earth, and a lot of the decisions that are made that affect, <clears throat> excuse me, that affect our day-to-day -day life, our lives, are based on these numbers and these figures and these calculations. You know, to include going to war and what kind of weapon is going to be used and so on and so forth. Or keeping somebody from getting a job. Um, all kinds of obscure, obscure things. So I'm going to read from Wikipedia. It says, Paul Erdos, he had his own idiosyncratic vocabulary. Although an agnostic atheist, he spoke of the book. I'm sure it was the Bible. A visualization of a book in which God had written down the best and the most elegant proofs of four mathematical theorems. Now, I've been saying this for a while, been saying this for a while, that I can prove God to you. God is real because I've seen my father's eyes and mouth. God is real because we were lifted up to him. God is real because since I was a child. So, I want you to put this on the table and, and recalculate what you've been calculating. 
I want you to use my my calculations and add it on the table of truth and transparency because if Mr. Erdos had his God-given right to have his own idiosyncratic vocabulary and he had his own given right with his freedom of speech and his freedom of expression and his freedom of religion to be an agnostic atheist then allow me he said um, he excuse me he spoke of the, of the book a visualization of a book in which God had written down the best and the most elegant proofs for mathematical theorems lecturing in 1985 he said you don't have to believe in God but you should believe in the book he himself doubted the existence of God whom he called a supreme fascist some people say fascist however you want to pronounce it and then to add an acronym to the insult SF okay capital S capital F at least he capitalized the acronym <clears throat> because some of the other nicknames that he used for America for example was Samland Samland um, as to, after Uncle Sam and that was all lowercase for the Soviet Union was Jodum for Joseph Stalin and that was <clears throat> all small letters <clears throat> for Israel it was Israel or is Israel but is real um, all lowercase so you know, I mean, I'm not saying that he's insulting the nations by giving them nicknames and then on top of that, lowercase. So he had the freedom to speak and have his own idiosyncratic vocabulary and nobody, you know, took his kids away from him and labeled him unstable, mentally unstable. In fact, a lot of these scientists were f from Hungary and, uh, you know, developing all kinds of weapons of mass destruction with their God-given gifts because they had a degree and they were working for a government. To develop weapons of mass destruction don't you know these people immigrate to their countries of destination and they have the same mentality the same intelligence because they were raised in a similar fashion and went to similar schools and learned similar similar material so they're using their god-given intelligence like dr seuss but or battle book so Folks, this is just dumb to be doing this to one another. Like, well, we have prestige, we have, you know, we have schooling, you know, we come from family, and you know, then you leave the average Joe out of the, the table and that's not fair because this earth is full of the average Joe Cat. so he himself doubted the exist existence of God whom he called the supreme fascist or fascist SF capital mind you so thank you 
he accused SF of hiding his socks. Didn't I tell you that what looks like far away is, is small? What looks like small is far away because we were far from God. And that it's kind of like going up, up, up and reaching through your sock. And the sock... You know, if it's inside out, you've got to write it. So you've got to go in from the inside and pull it by the, by the top and pull it down. And then it's, it's right side out. So he accused God, whom he called S.F., Of hiding his socks and I find it comical because he, if he didn't know where he left his socks that just goes to show you see he was confusing himself he had all kinds of little formulas and he was confused and then he said and the Hungarian passport passports so apparently he he just couldn't remember where his stuff was. And keeping the most elegant, he was accusing God of keeping the most elegant mathematical proofs to himself. Didn't I tell y'all about two years ago that God is math and science. I mean, he's not just math and science, but if, if we're going to be measuring let us put our measurements on the table. Let us prove. I have proof. So, how is, is this man accusing or has accused God of keeping the most elegant mathematical proofs to himself? Didn't God give us his word through the prophets and the apostles? Didn't God put a book out there? And don't y'all have books according to your religion, whether it's the Torah or the Bible or the Quran? Not necessarily in that order, but if we must talk about what books specifically, So, apparently, this gentleman had something twisted. The, the order of things are not in order. When I lived in Carlisle, on, in, on Carlisle Close, in Mobile, Alabama, I was waiting for my son to be returned to me. That, that apartment was close to immaculate and by the grace of God by the grace of God because I fell from the height of the chair to the floor and I broke my hand my, my wrist but by the grace of God th this happened as I was finishing the last touch and it was a freak accident but it wasn't an accident because I'm gonna tell you why it wasn't an accident because, first of all, I have done those kind of projects before, over and over and over, and I had never fallen. And it was just such a small, short distance that I, I still cannot believe I broke my arm. But God wanted me to break my arm. Let me show you why. So, when I had broken my arm... This was the last finishing touch that I was doing, which, which was my curtain. The apartment was fully put together by the grace of God. So when I broke my hand, my, my, my wrist, and I, I'm left-handed, and I had to use my right hand, not only was I already prepared because I had done some right-hand therapy years earlier, and I had to kind of recall, 
you know, I had never practiced um, using chopsticks with the right hand, but you will, you will find that some of these accidents are no accident at all. And I not only could crack an egg with my right hand better than I can with two hands or my left hand. And I do believe that it was because God wanted me to see for myself that He was my helping hand. <coughs> I had already put everything in its place. So when I had to get dressed in the morning to go to work, because I had just been hired by a, uh, a local company, and I had to be there really early in the morning. So I had to put my jeans on, button it up, zip it up, button it up. You know, I even flat ironed, not flat ironed, but um, hot combed my hair. You know, um, I I did my makeup with on um, both eyes, everything with my right hand for about two months or a month and a half, maybe a month and a half. And I did, in fact, it was as if there was no difference. The only difference was in my handwriting, which looked like a child, like a child's handwriting. But it was legible. It was very much legible. But it looked like a third grader's handwriting. And so, I learned, I, you know, I, I was very happy that that happened, actually, because I was able to, to heal my left hand, wrist I was told that I may need surgery, and I was like, oh, no, 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 no. I prayed to my papa. My papa said, do this, do this, do this. My, my papa said, fill the tub in the kitchen. Fill it up with warm water, not too hot, not too cold. Add Epsom salt. Add, um, if you don't, and then he said, if you don't have salt, then just add any salt. Because I was looking for what I had. He said, add Epsom salt. If you don't have Epsom salt, use any salt. And my papa told me. My papa said, go ahead and get the lavender oil and the tea tree oil. And put uh, magnesium in there and that calm magnesium powder. So I did. And um, I can't remember what, what other, I think that was it. That was it. It was simple. It was very simple and I took this is before they put a cast on my on my my wrist and I took off the bandages and the doctor had told me don't take off the bandages until we cast you but I my papa said just do it and my arm looked you know deformed like really skinny from all the, the bandages and um, my papa said just submerge it in the water and I want you to touch this little bone and that little bone. And I was in there feeling these little bones in my, my hand under the water like this. And I, I was feeling all the little bones and the, all the little cartilages and all the little, little things, little tendons and muscles. I was feeling it and I was envisioning my, my inside. I was envisioning it because I could feel it. And I could feel where it was messed up. And I just massaged it and massaged it and massaged it and massaged it. And then I felt like my papa said, okay, that's good. That's good. Don't overdo it. That's good. And then I kind of moved my arm a little bit under the water, not too much. And my papa said, elevate your arm, you know, with your right hand. Because my papa was helping me. He, my papa. And he said, just, you know, just elevate it and then pat it dry, just very so. And then bandage it up. And you're going to be okay. So I was fortunate to see Dr. Rutledge. Dr. Rutledge said everything was okay. That we were going to do the casting. That there was no surgery needed. Thank God for God. And by the grace of God. I had already all my underwear lined up in my drawers. Just everything just like so. So when I needed something. I knew exactly. Even if the light had gone out. I knew exactly where everything was. I knew where the, the underwear, the bras, the shirts, the pants, the shoes, everything was where it needed to be. Why? Because I prepared. 
I didn't know why I was preparing, but I was putting these things up quickly, quickly, like it was urgent matter. I was getting that apartment ready because I wanted my son Alexander to, to come home. I don't play games, folks. I'm not here looking for a sugar daddy. I've got my own daddy. Thank you. I know how to take care of my business. Hey, don't you tell me that you don't take care of your business. Of course you take care of your business, you hypocrites. Show me in the Bible where it says you can't take care of your business. So, uh, talking about business, I'm not getting paid to sit on my fundamental butt. No. And God has got a freedom, not oppression. I'm not going to hear from anybody that I can't take care of my own son because I'm not making any money. Okay, Cecil. You have got to respect. I identify as the abuelita from Jenny Lorenzo. I think it's hilarious. Do you think that I'm like bitter because I'm not young? Pfft. When I was young, I was like an old lady. And then I got all sexied up because to prove to you, you know, it's like you want to call me lazy fat B-I-T-C-H. Well, I will prove to you I'm not. And I will get into a size zero and then I'll show you. Because I don't like people mocking me. Que es eso? So I identify as the abuelita. I am an abuelita. I have a grandbaby. See? And he is most beautiful. He is most beautiful. Okay? And, um, but anyway, I need my son Alexander returned to me because I don't want him neglected. Nobody can take care of my son better than I can. So, he accused SF of hiding his socks in Hungarian passports. So, he had a sense of humor. You know, he, he really did. He was funny. And keeping the most elegant mathematical proofs to himself. That's a bunch of bull hockey. In the Bible, God says to become one, to become one, to become one. Two men will be out there in the field and one will be left. Two women will be out there grinding and one will be left. And two sticks become one. Okay, so what is it that God is hiding from you? Didn't God say in the book of Revelation that all the books are going to be opened? And that the, 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 the dead and the living are going to be judged. And that there's going to be only one book, the book of life. It's, good. it's too much studying sometimes. Too much, too much, too much. It confuses the, the, the people. Okay? And sometimes people get really, what they call elegant with, with their you know, with their calculations and their math and their science, that they just want to be above everybody else. That only the, the, the in crowd knows what's going on. The elite. Because everybody else is not intelligent. Oh, they didn't go to universities. You know, these, these fancy universities. I'm not going to be saying any names, but you know what I mean. It says so in the Bible. There's no need for all this extravagance. And what God calls simple-minded is, is really like ignorant of God. Not ignorant people that, that they don't know how to read and write. I'm talking about ignorant of God. This is why God has given us not only the written law, but the law that is the, 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 the word that is spoken. And the new covenant is going to be written in our hearts. So, how is this person going to say that God kept the most elegant mathematical proofs to himself? When God has a book for all people, free of charge, but these mathematicians and scientists physicists they have these formulas but my friend Albert Einstein gave me a formula 
He said, M&M &M equals E. Military money equals Einstein. And President Eisenhower came to me and said the same thing. M&M &M equals E. Military money equals Eisenhower. But it's really M&M &M equals E, E, which is to become one. So M, M&M &M equals M and E E equals E, so it's me, and when we look in the mirror of heaven, me is we. Don't you know that God separated the waters? So there's a waters above, too. Read your books. Waters above us, for sure. Whether it's the Quran or the Old Testament or, well, the Old Testament that we have, in the Torah, it says so. So, the, when you look in the water, you're going to see your reflection. The Word of God is water. Don't you know His, His Word is just, His Spirit is fire, and He's fire and water. He's the balance. John the Baptist, who was preparing the way for, for, for this, the Son of God who was coming to baptize us with the Holy Spirit, John the Baptist was preparing the way with what? With water. Baptize him with water, which is the Word. The Word. The Word. Water. And water represents life because f since the beginning, the Spirit of God hovered over the, the face of the waters. The face of the waters. People pay attention. Okay, when you look in the in the in the in the water, in the pool, or in the pond, or in the lake, you're gonna see your reflection. So he, when he saw a particular, particularly beautiful mathematical proof, he would exclaim, "The ones from the book." This later inspired a book titled Proofs from the Book. So he was inspired to write a book from God's mathematical proofs. Come. So he had a sense of humor, all right. So this is my response to this. I am not here to count the dead. Because Mr. Erdos um, had an acronym for everything, and CD was for counting dead. Counting dead. Yeah, it was for counting dead. Okay. So... I am not here to count the dead. I am here to speak to the living. Those who remain faithful to God, not SF. S is for spirit. S is for shin, as in the letter shin, as in fire, as in tooth for speech and S is for Savior and the letter F is F as in E-P-H for Ephraim and Ephesus so I will use an S instead for mother suckers instead of F because I don't like being vulgar no, there's no need to be vulgar on Facebook. So, mother suckers are those people who take kids away from their, their moms. If I had desired to give up my son for adoption, I wouldn't have gotten pregnant. If I had desired to give up my son for up for adoption, I would have done so when he was up in my womb before I got to bond with my baby. 
the reason why, and I'm going to say it, there was a closer bond between Jacob and I than there was with Alexander and I because everybody and their brother was knocking on my door, interrupting. I had people watch me as I was nursing my son and saying things like, oh, I wish I, I could have a, a little boy, you know, and eventually he did, but it was on and on and on. And I had all kinds of people interrupting my son's nap when I would lay Alexander down for a nap between 12 and 1. Almost always somebody would knock on the door purposely as if they could see from the inside of my apartment. Or somebody was sending them a, a something like, hey, you want to make extra cash or now's the time to go knock on her door. I swear to you. I'm not making this stuff up and I'm not falsely accusing anybody. It's the truth. Every day I would lay Alexander down for a nap. Some lady would come and knock on my door. And when I put a, a, a sign on the door, she would come and knock on the windows because she wanted me to translate for her. And it's like, I didn't go to Mobile to be some translator. If I'm interpreting the word of God is because that's my calling. I didn't go to Mobile to be an attorney. If, if anybody brings up anything to my attention and they need somebody to interpret it versus translating in the court, there's a big difference. I have never desired to be in court day in and day out just for, for what? For money? No. I wanted to have my restaurant because I enjoy being in, a, in that kind of environment. I like cooking and eating and, and the conversations that you have with your co-workers in that environment is very fun. And the food, the smells, I just love good smells. I don't want to be smelling yucky stuff. I don't want to be smelling blood and other body fluids. No. Everybody has a calling, folks, okay? Everybody has a calling. That's why I was a vegetarian for a long time because I didn't want to be smelling, you know, blood. But, you know, I don't want to be cutting up flesh. No. Because everybody has a calling. That's why I can't be a plastic surgeon from, like, cutting people up. No, I can't do that. But I can do other kinds of surgery. My papa told me, get down on the, on the ground and fix my back when I had a bulging disc. It's true. And you know, I, I back then we didn't have Facebook and YouTube and all of that that you could just be like, oh, look what I'm doing. Because even if I did, you would think I was faking it. You would think I was putting one picture with another and mixing it all up, one audio with, you know, how they do. Okay. So, anyway, so, I am the Epsilon Correction. I'm here to count the living. All who believe in the Spirit of Truth stand. The time has come. The truth, the Spirit of Truth, the time has come to you, to y'all, to us. Time has come to us. So stand. Son of God, Son of Man, stand. The one in you is greater than you. Stand. See, Moses lifted up the, the snake in the wilderness and it turned into a staff. The Father told him how to do it. And Jesus said that the Son of Man is going to be lifted like Moses lifted up that snake. And see, when God told Moses to pick a leader in the community, because Moses was getting too old. So he said, it's time, Moses, it's time for you to pick somebody. And Moses chose Joshua. But, but, excuse me, yes, I, I wanted to say Yeshua, but 
Joshua and, and Yeshua are the same. Okay, but Moses changed his name to Joshua because sometimes the name has to be changed to match what that to represent what that person's doing for for a living. So just like last names were picked out back back in the days, like you know the Smiths and the Carpenters and the you know the Valleys and the Millers and everybody had a, a name, a family name because based on their occupation. So that's the way it was with the first names. God would change people's names or you know they would change the, their names and um but it was all done with order and for a reason and the bible explains why so when and if the bible is incomplete let us put our books together the torah the quran let us put our books together and and math and science for those of you who don't believe in god let let us add it all up i can prove god to you God is the creator and he's also with us. We went up, up, up into him and he into us. So when Moses picked Joshua, they, they, the Bible said Joshua, son of Nun. And Nun is not like those nuns that, you know, don't get married and live, you know, and um, you know, the, the lives that they do and, you know, their service to God is just in, in isolation, basically. Um, and I know that there's different kinds of nuns. There are nuns that, that are very outgoing and they'll go out there in the community and they, they do a lot for the community. And that's wonderful. Everybody has a calling. If it's your calling to be a nun, by all means, be a nun. You know, that's... God gives people the freedom to praise Him the way that that He has called us to praise Him. So if it's your calling to be a nun or a priest or, or, or a pastor or whatever, or be married or not married or whatever it is that God has called you to do, by all means do it because you have that freedom to do so. And He's your judge. He's your maker and He made you the way you are. And He's your judge. Nobody else has the right to judge you. But son of none does not mean a nun. It means the letter N, which means snake. And um, so the son of God and the son of man is the one the son of man is the one who has strength and courage so if we are the body of christ that means that we are the different parts of the body we already know that the bible says so with the different gifts so if we are the body of christ who's christ jesus right so that we are in Jesus and Jesus in us how can that be I've explained it to you I can prove God to you so that's all that I have to say about that you know I, I know that this this is a, a well-known mathematician and um, he had a sense of humor, but um, everybody has a right to be whatever they want to be, an atheist, and choose their religion or lack of it. Because just because you have a religion doesn't make you faithful, and just because you're faithful doesn't make you, you know, a religious person. Or you may be faithful and not have a religion. So you know that's irrelevant God gives people the freedom and, and this gentleman went to his grave with all of these calculations but I'm here to 
to share with you that SF <laughs> is for Savior. S is for Shin, which is fire, which is the, the spirit of fire. And S is for spirit. And F is for family. Because God has promised us a gift. And you can check with Peter if you want, but um, it says so in the Bible that God has a, a, a gift. He has promised a gift. And uh, he also said there's going to be harmony between the two. So if, we, if we're talking about David, you know, in, in, in the director of music, you know, David was the director of music. And the book of Revelation says that he's the root and the, and the descendant of David. So, music, David. Okay, this, then we've got the Psalms. And then we've got, um, in the book of Zechariah, it says that there will be harmony between the two, between Joshua and who? In Jerusalem, which is one. Because Satan is not chosen. Who's Satan? Ask, ask Peter. Let's ask Peter. Let's, let us look at our Bible. Okay. So, the thing is, God had given Peter, um, God was showing Peter something that was coming down. I'm going to show you real quick. I'm here. Okay. So, <clears throat> the director of music, there will be harmony between the two. So we're talking about music harmony. So do, re, do, re means golden. Mi, fa, mi, fa means gift or family. Okay. So when Peter, he was in a trance just like I've experienced. It's not, you're not asleep and it's not a dream. It is a trance and there's a difference. When Peter was in this trance, he saw a vision. And you know, it, it was a vision with all kinds of things, right? And you've seen my, my visions. I've shared them with you. But it was like a sheet that was coming at him. Like, I'm not doing it right. It's a sheet that was coming at him, and he could see the vision, and and he said, "Oh, to to God." He's like, "I'm not, I'm not touching that." God said, "Kill and eat, but overcome evil with what? With good." So you kill evil with good, right? And Peter refused. Three times he questioned God. And it's like, disciples don't question God. And then he pointed out the betrayer, which was Judas. And then they cast lots to pick Math Matthias instead of Paul. And God told them in, in the Bible, and we can read it together in the book of Acts, specifically, wait, wait for the, you know, wait for the, 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 the okay. And they went ahead and cast lots and chose Matthias. They were disobeying. And Peter is responsible for that because Peter was the the first disciple. He was given the keys to the kingdom of of God. And then we can go back a little bit when Jesus was alive and Jesus told Peter, like, get it, get out of my way, Satan. 
because he was questioning Jesus. Like, Jesus, but we can't have you die. But he's like, you don't understand. This is the way it has to be. My father has sent me here for a reason, and I am going to accomplish it. And you're just like being impertinent. So, then in the book of, of Acts, Peter went on to embellish what he was quoting the book of Psalms, I believe it's Psalm 109, um, and it's, it's um, to the director of music, David, and he was quoting the psalm, but embellished it. A section of a psalm, not the whole thing. Embellished it in, in relation to Judas. And now that's what, that's hearsay from Peter. That's not at all what, what God said about Judas or what Jesus said about Judas. That's what Peter said. That this is, this is um, why it says in the, in the, in the book of Psalms, so and so and so. And I have highlighted it for you. And Peter was disobedient not only three times, but then he denied God. And that scroll went back up to heaven. I've received that scroll, that sheet. And my father said, eat it. And it's in Spanish, there's a term that says, come libro. Come libro is somebody who eats books, not literally. And I am not claiming to be somebody I'm not. I'm not perfect. I am a human being. One of my legs is longer than the other. One of my knees is, is messed up. M one of my ankles is, is weaker than the other. But you know, I get on my tiptoes and I just like make it happen. You know? Because I don't want my back to be thrown off balance or out of whack. So if I have to get on my tiptoe on my left foot, or wear high heels to help this the, the, the matter, whatever. If I have to put makeup on to look presentable, to look pretty, I will do it. Because people will judge you by the way you look. They'll judge you because you're making an effort or because you're not making an effort you know if i were to stand here and show you my armpits you would be like ew i mean i have hair i'm i'm a female but females have hair in their underarms but they shave it why is it that females shave it and men don't shave it god gave us hair god gave us hair eyelashes and eyebrows and hair and hair and hair down there why do women shave their hair in in certain areas you see how why do women wear makeup and men don't why do women wear pink and they can wear blue and they can wear green and yellow and men can't wear pink i mean they do but you know what i mean all of these things have to be considered because everybody has rights. See, this song came to me. Green is what she sees all day and night, y'all. Green is for rebirth and rebuild. Green is for renew and restore our society. Green is for proactive love, dove love. And this came to me when I lived on Duff Lane. And then there's other other um, sections to my song, but it's really long. And then you get down to the bottom. 
The truth is black and white and all the colors in between. The rainbow of love. Let us hold hands and dance and become one under the sun. The sun, the key we hold, is desire for God. Desire for God. So, Peter had the key. The keys. But then, who else has the keys? So, David? Yeah. It is. It's all true. I am who I say I am. And we all are. Because I'm just part of the body. We are all the faithful we are parts of the body of of Jesus, the Son of Man with courage and, and strength and courage and the Son of God being born of His light. I'm not making this up. I'll highlight it for you. I just don't want to embellish the Word of God. I take the Word of God seriously. If my papa didn't tell me to write it down or my papa said, you know, I need to be careful because... Sometimes people get, you know, really fancy. And, and it's okay. It's beautiful to get fancy with your wording and embellish. But when it comes to the Word of God, you've got to be very careful. Very careful. Okay? So, let us come together on the table of truth and transparency. I don't care if you're an atheist. If you're an atheist, that's your God-given right to be an atheist. You have rights, just like everybody has rights. Right? If you're a, a male, a female, if you're Hispanic or not, if you're legal or illegal, if you're gay, you're straight, black or white, old or new, or old or young, you, you have rights. Everybody has the right to live and prosper and practice their, you know, pr praise God in the way they know how. Or if you don't praise God, that's okay. Come with your intelligence anyway, because it's God-given intelligence anyway. You know, somebody made you. You think you've made yourself? No. You know, it's like, who made your mom and your dad? And who made your mom's parents and your dad's parents? And who made their parents? Okay, we can go to infinity, right? So that's what's called scattering. But God wants you to <laughs> gather. And my number is one, by the way. Thank you for listening. May God bless you and protect us all for the love of God and Jesus. Thank you, Papa, for your most mercy. And Paul, I want to talk about Paul. Yes, from Paul to Paul, from Mr. From from Paul the Apostle Paul, which is the twelfth apostle, by the way, to Mr. Paul Erdos. Yes. He was very funny. SF. Woo! Mother suckers. Sucking the life out of mothers. This is not right. We need to give those kids back to the moms in DHR. Yes, and we live in America and God we trust. Hallelujah. Woo! Freedom and justice for all. Oh, yes. Hallelujah. I cannot sing, but I can pray and I can praise my papa. Thank God for God. All right.